Mark Jackson thought about Joel and the team last night. Mark, of course, a part of NBC Sports Philadelphia, Sixers pre- and post-game live. And, Mark, I, I came in today and I tweeted this last night that for the first time in a while, I feel good that I felt disappointed in a Sixers loss, that a loss now means something. Like, you don't want to have this feeling. But that was a good feeling to have last night that the Sixers lost the game, wasn't it? Well, you know, I don't think any any athlete feels you know good after a loss. But as a fan, you know, as, as analysts, we sit back and we say we'll take that one on the chin and build from it. You know, that was kind of that was the kind of game that you know you you were you were pleasantly surprised, right? Because you came in optimistic, but they fulfilled you know what you thought and been better to come out with a win. But you know, for us, you got to be excited about that. Yeah, and, and I meant from a fan's perspective. I you know the players always feel disappointed when they lose, but a lot of the fans over the years have kind of, uh, you know, okay, we're okay with kind of losing. We understand where this is going. But going into last night, when you feel disappointed, it's because you expected to win that kind of game. And the way they lost it, uh, we've seen this a lot, you know, turning the ball over late in a game. Uh, that's something that they certainly need to improve upon, which is these late-game situations. But I want to ask you first about Joel uh, I saw you in the post game last night. You said you thought he was kind of chipping some of the rust off. I agree with that. That didn't look like the Joel that we saw at stretches last year. He was good, but he wasn't that dominating player last night. Yeah, I, I agree with you. You know, I thought it was a double R. He had to build that rust off and then get his rhythm back. You know, he was chipping slowly but surely, and that's a good thing. You know, when you see moves like he would make, that he looked good, then next thing he looked rusty. They are like, you know what, I'll take that because that's a positive right there. That means. You see, he's still behind the eight ball, still not 100%, and he still finished with a double-double last night. And the team almost, when he was two turnovers away from getting a win, you know, it's only sky's the limit, you know, and I really believe his chemistry with Ben, with JJ, is, is great, and I really think that's a nice duel along with the, the foundation piece they have with the role players. That's a lot to build on. Hey, Mark, what was your takeaway about the whole minutes restriction thing? Did you like the way it was presented, and do you agree that he should be on a restriction or just maybe let it play out organically like Mike Gill's been lobbying for? You know, um, for him, it was uh, – for him, he kind of – the way he heard about it was I'm, – I'm going to be honest, I don't have no inside information, but assuming that – they had spoke to the media, meaning Brett Brown and Colangelo, and they had spoke to the media. And then the first thing he did was run to him and talk about minutes restrictions. Like, what well, minutes restrictions? And it kind of hit him. It caught him off guard, and he just had his natural reaction. Like, you know, he, first of all, I'm not going to say what he said, but he disagreed with it. <laughs> you know, Thank do you. I agree with the minutes restrictions? Um, I understand that, you know, they're trying to bring him in slowly, but you can't, like he said, you can't call it the minute restriction. We got it's, it's the eye test. We got to see how you're looking. If you're able to be finished on the night, you're able to play more, then we're able to play you more. If we're finished on your little sluggish, you're not looking good, you're, we're going to bring you out. Like, for example, in the two preseason games against the Nets, he looked sharp. He looked he, like he had a, some step in his step. But two days later, in the second game, he just he just didn't look right. He just didn't look like he, he was comfortable. He wasn't moving well. He was extremely tired from the start. His body was still fatigued from two nights prior to that. Uh, so in that case, I say, hey, you only go play 20 minutes tonight. You know, so I think you got to go by the odds. That's the minute restriction thing. I think that phrase, as Sixers fans, we don't want to hear that. And, you know, and I think it's great that you all don't want to hear that. So I just think it's an eye test. We got to play a game by game, see how you feel it. If you're looking good, you're feeling good, we're going to play you. If you're like you're too fatigued, your body's beat up, we're going to sit you a little bit. Yeah, and I like the way that he presented it last night after the game where he said, look, it's not that I'm upset about the restriction. I, I just need to be honest with them when I'm tired or if I need to come out because fatigue causes injury. I thought that was a key phrase, Mark, did you, where he says being fatigued is where you get injured. I agree 100%. And for him to, to say that same thing or, or after the postgame, that was, that, that was extraordinary because this is true. And, you know, and like I said, if you go back and watch the video, his second game, he looked fatigued. He looked fatigued. His body looked worn down. And uh, and he, he, like, he, so he shouldn't have played as much the next game. So, you know, just that observation, he says it right. And I, I'm going to be honest, as a, a former player, I appreciate him wanting to go out there, wanting to play, kind of being kind of, you know, uh, confrontational. Like, hey, 
and no minutes restrictions. If I feel great, I want to play. Like he's putting the whole the the, the uh, he's putting the pressure on the Sixers staff that he wants to play. And if I feel great, y'all can't hold me back. I like that. Right, right, Mark. Because it, it sounds like the way that Brett Brown addressed it yesterday, and the way Joel's coming out is, it almost feels like he's been attacked by so many people that he can't play. You've only played 31 games, and he feels like. I'm letting people down, and he wants them to understand, I can play. They're just restricting me, or they're not letting me. I could play more than 31 games. They wouldn't let me get out on the court. I could play more minutes. They won't let me. It seems like he's trying to get that message out there that it's not me, it's them that is holding me back. I agree. I agree 100% with you. know, And as a player, they always tell you, read the good, don't read the bad. But to be honest, we're all human beings. When we're reading the, the clippings, we're reading both. Because for me, I use motivation. I'm quite sure he has. And he's, he knows what not just the media is saying, but what his, his his other players in the NBA are saying. All the players are laying them saying, mess like, dude, how do you get that money? You didn't play 31 games. You know, so I'm quite sure he, he knows what people are saying. He wants to prove them wrong. So he has a chip on his shoulder about that. And, yes, I think he, he wants to prove everybody that I'm, I'm here I can play, they won't let me. So I, I think that's important that we identify that he does understand that and he's trying to fight through that. Uh, we're talking with Mark Jackson from Sixers pre- and post-game live on NBC Sports Philadelphia. Uh, your assessment of Ben Simmons last night, I mean, here's a guy that has never played a regular season game. I don't want to say he made it look easy, but you certainly have to be um, – you know, excited for the possibility of watching this kid grow over the course of his first season here. Uh, I was not worried about him handling the point guard duties and just watching it. Just going back to his brief summer league, you saw this guy had the vision and the intuition as a passer. It was, all right, whether or not his bulk and his size will allow him to do some things that we vision point guards doing. But last night, I think you had to be pretty, uh, he almost exceeded expectations going up against a guy like John Wall, too. I agree. You know, one thing in college, I, I think it's a little different uh, how he played in college to compare, how, compare to how he's being used now. In college, he was just a point forward. They would bring the ball up the court. They would give it to him at the top of the key. He would make the play. He is the full-time, primarily ball handler for the Philadelphia 76ers. It's a difference. You know, it's a difference. And I, I had questions. I had questions, well, well, yeah, he had the ball in his hand. He had to make plays in college. But he wasn't bringing the ball up out on made shots, running plays. He's doing that for the 76ers. So uh, I, I had questions, and he answered a lot of them last night because you're going to get the, the one-man fast break in John Wall and in the end on maids and misses who get in their paint. You know, he did a very good job. He, he set up his teammates, but we knew he was going to do that. You know, when teams start really keying on him and daring him to score more, let's see if he, he's – I don't want to say capable, but let's see if he truly wants to score more. Because I think teams are going to start seeing what the shooters that the 76ers have and Gerald Bellis and Covington, and we're not even going to talk about J.J. the shooter, ready. We're not going to talk about him or Dario when he gets hot. With them amount of shooters, I really think teams are going to force Ben to have to score more. And I don't know if that's in his makeup now to be a ball-dominant scorer where he acts to score. Okay, I'm going to score 25 for you. I don't know if he truly wants to do that. But I think with this team, the way I think with all the playmakers and shooters they have around him that need him to set them up, I think they're going to start making him score the ball. And let's see if he's do that. What about uh, Markel Fultz, Mark? Any concerns there? He showed some flash at 10 points off the bench, but he didn't really stand out or jump off the page, right? Well, he was comfortable. You know, um, uh, it's a, it's, I think it's more questions about Markel Fultz. Uh, than it is about Joel and Ben, to be honest, because I, I believe if everything, let's say if we had the draft yesterday, two days ago, and then a, a first NBA game was the next day, everything has been smooth selling. But what I think is, is bringing questions in the light is he goes to the draft, he plays summer league, and then in camp, he changes his shot, not for the better. That brings up a whole lot of questions. Why? Is it pain? Are you injured? Is it something mean? What we need to do? Do we need to sit you for three months? So it's a whole bunch of questions. As far as in the games, he did what I think he could do. Like he got to the room with ease. He got to the room. Uh, he got he got the ball taken from him a few times. 
Uh, that was my only surprise there was with his frame, with his body, I thought he would be a little bit short legged a little bit stronger. I, I believe he's gotten knocked around a little bit by opposing teams' guards, even in the preseason. And that's something that kind of kind of had me scratch my head because I think he's a powerful built guard, uh, sort of like a Dwayne Wade type of frame. But uh, him getting comfortable, and I think his role with this team to start of the season is going to help his transition to be a very good player for the 76ers coming off the bench playing against opposing teams second year. Yeah. Yeah, it just seemed like another guy who didn't get a lot of play in the preseason. He'd take the ball to the basket, and in college, that that rim isn't as uh, uh, populated. You know, he's taking the ball to the basket in the pro game, and he was having a lot of people greet him there, not so much in college. So, um, tough night taking the ball to the basket a little bit for Fultz, but he did show flashes. The Sixers lose last night, uh, but plenty to discuss. Mark Jackson, a part of the Sixers pre- and post-game live crew on NBC Sports Philadelphia, and we'll be talking to Mark throughout the basketball season here. Mark, it's always a pleasure, pal. We always have fun. Hey, that's great. And next time you guys are chicken beef, man, y'all got to invite me so I'll come get some crab. Hey, we're here every Thursday, Atlantic City, <laughs> Tropicana. There's your invite. You're Standing invited every invite. week, man. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, Mark, take care, man. We'll catch up with him soon. Mark Thanks, Jackson, guys. everybody here. Thank you, buddy. On the Sports Fast.